Okay, so in the last um, video we started to look at investments, so where we're sort of reversing the flow of the money, we're paying money to the bank, the bank's paying us interest, and we looked at examples of investments where we withdraw money, um, and we sort of might use that. An example of where this is quite common is in retirement, where people would, you know, invest their lump sum of um, superannuation savings, um, and then on a you know monthly or whatever frequency they determine base would withdraw um, a payment sort of as a salary through retirement. So what we want to look at here is a specific example of, a, um, of an annuity which is called a perpetuity. And what we know is that an annuity will earn interest at every compound period and if the payment received at each compound period, so if we withdraw a payment that is greater than the interest earned, then the value of the annuity eventually increases to zero. And that was the sort of situations we were looking at in the last video. If, however, the payment received at each compounding period is less than the interest, so if we withdraw money that's less than the interest being earned, then the value of the annuity would increase over time. Okay, We would still be saving money, we'd be growing our investment. Further to that, if the payment received at each compounding period is actually equal to the interest earned, so if we, we just withdraw the interest every month or every time we compound interest, um, then the annuity will maintain its value indefinitely and we call this a perpetuity. We say the value, uh, we, uh, when something doesn't change, it happens uh, in perpetuity, forever, you know, for an indefinite period of time. As we go on and on in time, this is what will happen. And so um, we call this type of investment a perpetuity because in perpetuity, the value of the investment remains the same, okay? Because all we're doing every month or quarter or however often we compound the interest is withdrawing the interest, okay? Um, and so these are basically interest-only loans, but in reverse. So in an interest-only loan, we take, we borrow the money, we repay, we make repayments to the bank, and every month or every compounding period, the repayment is equal to the interest. So all we're doing is paying off the interest every month, the value of the loan doesn't change. The same is true here, it's just happening in reverse. We're investing money into, the, into a, a bank, um, and every compounding period that um, investment grows according to interest, um, and then when we make our withdrawal from that investment, we only withdraw the value of the interest and therefore maintain the value of the investment at its initial value. Okay, so again, the recurrence relations are the same as what they were, what they are for um, interest-only loans, and they're pretty much the same as what they are for reducing balance loans and um, the annuities we looked at in the previous video. The only difference is when we're calculating the payment, the payment is going to be um, a percentage of the initial investment. Okay. Um, so if the payment amount is equal to the interest added in the first compounding period, then the balance of the annuity remains contra constant and what we have is actually a perpetuity. Okay, so again, Finance Solver can be used for these, but the calculations are actually very straightforward because exactly the same thing happens every month um, and we, shouldn't, we don't really need the Finance Solver, but we'll have a look at um, solving these problems in both ways. So $3,000 is invested in a perpetuity that will provide a monthly income without using any of the initial investment, so just by paying the interest. If the interest rate for the perpetuity is 5.5% per annum, what monthly payment will be received? Okay, so the monthly payment is going to be equal to the monthly interest. And the monthly interest will be the same every month because the balance remains the same. Okay, so to, the cal to calculate the monthly interest, we first of all need the monthly interest rate. So that's going to be 5.5 divided by 12, okay, which again is a recurring decimal. So we just want to be a bit precise about how we use that in our CAS. So 0.4583 recurring percent is how much we're going to earn every month. Um, so the monthly interest is going to be 0. 4583 recurring percent of the initial investment, which in this case was 300,000. Okay, so that is 0.004583. So remember, percent means divide by 100. Dividing this number by 100, we get 0, 0.00. Uh, and then all of its times, 300,000. Okay, so I'm just going to divide my interest rate by 100 in my CAS, so I don't have to. I'm not rounding it, I'm just using that nice exact value. And then we want to multiply that by 300,000. Okay, so the monthly payment is going to be 
$1,375 exactly. So in the first month, the interest earned is on this investment is $1,375. Therefore, we'll withdraw that as a payment in the first month. The value of the investment therefore remains at $300,000. And so therefore, this is how much interest it will earn every month. And that's what we'll, we will withdraw as a payment every month. If you want to use the Finance Solver menu 8.1, Again, when it's a perpetuity or an interest only loan, the same thing happens every compounding period. So you only ever need to look at one compounding period. Um, the interest rate is 5.5% per annum. Um, we're investing, so negative 300,000. Um, the payment is what we want to work out. Um, we're not getting the future value down to zero. We want to keep the value of the investment at 300,000. In this case, the future value will be positive because that is money um, belonging to, to me as the investor. Okay, So that is money that's owed to me, um, even though it's sitting in the bank. Um, okay, so we then press enter on the payment. Uh, just checking our payments per year and compounds per year. It should be monthly. And so hit enter on the payment and we find it indeed it should be 1375 But all that is is the monthly interest at the first um, in the first month. So you simply just need a percentage of 300000 to calculate that. Okay, example two. How much money will need to be invested in a perpetuity account earning 4.7% per annum compounding monthly if $1,500 is to be withdrawn every month? Okay, so the monthly payment, which is the same as the monthly interest because it's a perpetuity, is $1,500. Our interest rate is 4.7% per annum. So as a monthly interest rate, 4.7 on 12, let's just, oh, sorry, get out of the finance over, 4.7 on 12. Again, so just being careful about that, 0.3916 recurring percent, okay, which means we'll multiply by 0 0.00, uh, sorry, no, oh, uh, yeah, um, 0 0.003916. Okay, so if we wanted to work out um, how much money needs to be invested, okay, to work out the monthly interest, so if we work out the interest in the first month, we're going to do 0 0.3916 recurring percent of the principal. Okay, so the amount that was initially invested. So if we think about what we know here, the interest in the first month, we know that's 1500. We're told that. Zero point, and let's um, percent, so divide that by 100, point, so point zero zero three nine one six. Sorry, it's not a four. Three nine one six. Multiply by the principal value, which is what we don't know. So let's just call that x, for example. And then if your um, algebra is good enough, you might be able to see that you can quickly rearrange that. You're going to divide both sides by point three nine one six and get, but I'll show you a different way, divide by 0 0.0039, oh no, sorry, I want to get that actual value in my CAS, so I'm going to divide that by 100, so it's point, it's point 0.6 recurring. All right, so that's the value there that I want to divide by, so I'm going to do 1500 divided by that value there in my CAS, keeping it nice and exact, and I find that the principal value of the loan must have been 380, or the investment, sorry, $382,978.72. Okay. Now, if you're not comfortable with going from this step to this step and rearranging that equation, obviously you could solve an equation, 1500 equals um, this number up here, that number there, multiplied by x, and you could solve that for x, and we get the same value. Okay. Alternatively, you could use finance solver here, so menu 81 for your finance solver. Again, perpetuity or interest only loan, we only need to look at one payment period. The interest rate is 4.7%. So particularly when the interest doesn't divide nicely by 12, it might be easier to use finance over, but I want you to have the flexibility between the two. Principal value is what we're trying to find out. Um, the payment is 1500. Um, and the, ah, now this is actually, sorry, my, my mistake, you actually cannot use your finance solver here. And that's because if it's the principal value that you don't know, you then have, it means you have two unknowns in the finance solver because we don't know what the principal value was and therefore we also don't know what the future value is. So actually finance solver isn't going to be any use to you and so you're going to need to know how to work through this um, 
by thinking about how we go about calculating um, the interest. So the interest in the first month is the monthly percentage times the principal. So in this case, we know what the interest is in the first month, we know what the monthly interest rate is, and it is the principal value that's unknown. So set up a little equation, either get your CAS to solve it, or do the rearranging yourself and get your CAS to calculate it. Okay, so example three. An old Melbourneian intends to award an annual Melbourne Grammar School scholarship worth $15,000. He plans to invest $800,000 in a perpetuity so that the interest from the investment can fund the annual scholarship. What is the minimum interest rate that will allow this prize to be awarded indefinitely? Okay, so this time we know um, what the initial investment was. We know what the um, payment that we want to be able to take out of it every year is, but we want to know, need to know what the um, interest rate would be. Okay, so in this case, once again, we know that our um, monthly payment is the same as our monthly interest um, slash interest is going to be equal to our um, monthly interest rate oh, sorry it's not monthly it's annual we're taking only taking the payment out once a year so the annual payment or interest is going to be equal to R which is going to be our annual interest rate multiplied by um, the principal. So the principal that was invested. So in this case we know that 15,000 we want to take that out. We don't know what the interest rate is but we know what the we know what the principal was. It was 800,000. So we're really just trying to work out what percentage is 1,500 out of um, 800,000. So it's 1,500 out of 800,000. Okay and um, uh, actually it's not going to give us quite our interest well and then we'll times by 100% to change it into a percentage okay um, so we're going to get 15 sorry I've left a zero off my 800,000 15,000 divided by 800,000 yep good enough series there and then times it by 100 to make it a percent control enter to get that as a decimal so it is 1.875% um, is the interest rate they're going to need on that perpetuity and that means that if it earns that interest, that means every year it earns $15,000 in interest. And so we can withdraw the $15,000 um, to pay into the scholarship fund. Um, and yet the investment still remains in perpetuity worth $800,000. Um, the other way we could use Finance Solver to calculate that one, because the only value that's unknown is the interest rate. So again, menu 8.1. Um, again, we only need to look at one payment period. The interest rate is what we don't know. The principal value we've invested $800,000. Um, the payment is going to be $15,000 um, and the value will still be $800,000 after the payment is withdrawn um, because it's equal to the interest and so we want to know what the interest rate is. Oh, sorry, I must have left a zero out here. Or did I leave a zero out in my other calculation? Ah, I've realised my error. We remember that this is an annual um, investment and so um, payment per year and compound per year isn't 12, it's 1. Okay, so let's go back and work out the interest rate. And so the interest rate would be 1.875% uh, per annum. So that is the minimum interest rate that would allow the prize to be awarded indefinitely. We earn $15,000 in interest every year and that can then be withdrawn and donated. Um, okay, so exercise 9F is looking at perpetuities.